page one of the addendum for a property subject to mandatory membership in a property owners association. This is your HOA addendum. Note that this is not for use with condos. The first line will be the address of the subject property. The second line is going to be the name of the association, the HOA association, and it's asking for a phone number. So let's just say dash HOA is the name. And, of course, we can make a phone number up. But where would you find the phone number? You can ask the uh, listing agent. They, the seller definitely knows who they're paying their HOA fees to and how to contact those people. Uh, the title company would probably know if they're doing a lot of business in that area. Uh, lastly, you can check the MLS and Google really will tell you a lot of information these days. You can Google the HOA and lots of times you will be able to find um, the actual bylaws and rules, copies of those. You'll be able to find phone numbers, email addresses, mailing addresses for the HOA. So just do a little bit of homework here. Make sure you've got the name of the HOA in there and most definitely, preferably, some sort of contact information. Paragraph A of the Mandatory Owners Association, the HOA addendum, is regarding the subdivision information. Um, copies of the restrictions, the rules, and the bylaws of the association in which the property falls within those boundaries. So you'll have four options. The first option will be a number of days that the seller will obtain and pay for the delivery of the subdivision information. Option two is within a number of days uh, the buyer shall obtain and pay for the delivery of the subdivision information. Option three is that the buyer has received and approved the subdivision information before signing the contract. And then you need to address whether the buyer does or does not require an updated resale certificate. If the buyer does, they're paying for this. Um, option four is that the buyer does not require the delivery of the subdivision information. Each of these three options all end in the same way with the if the seller fails to deliver the resale certificate, then the buyer gets their earnest money back. If you'll take a look at even the one in which the buyer shall obtain and pay for, if the buyer due to <clears throat> factors beyond buyer's control is not able to obtain the subdivision information within the time required, the buyer as the buyer's sole remedy terminate the contract within three days of the required or prior closing, whichever occurs first, and the earnest money will be refunded to the buyer. So even in this scenario, the buyer is refunded the earnest money. So you'll pick one of these options. Lots of times you can ask the title company if they are familiar with the area, how many days that you would need to obtain the HOA information. Um, lots of times we hear that we need around 15 days for them to order that information, the process time, and then receive that information back. But again, check with the title company and or the HOA if you can reach them and see how long that turnaround time is. Paragraph C deals with the additional fees uh, regarding the transfer of the HOA documents. Um, these fees are in 
addition to the fees already addressed in paragraphs A, D, and E. They're asking for a numerical number here. Um, they're not asking for a ratio or percentage. If your buyers are willing to pay half, then reach out to Title or do a Google and see if you can find out what those fees are and then put a number here. We, this is completely negotiable. We see things from none all the way to, you know, hundreds of dollars just completely depends on what those fees are and what your buyers are willing to pay. Again, if they want to pay half, just try to find out what that number might be and put a number in here.